GAS is all about the possibility to automate the creation of full digital twin models with every detail inside. And it is based on several concepts, so I will try to slowly introduce them one by one. And I'm sure you will have a ton of questions and doubts, but I beg for your patience since I hope that most of your questions will be answered when I introduce some of the following concepts and most of your doubts will be settled in time. Now, the software is still very much work in progress and it will take a little bit more time before I give it to you for testing. But only people in the mailing list will get that information, so be sure to subscribe to this channel and go to the gasworld.com or gas.world and join the email list. So you will be then among the first ones that can test this. And now, without further ado, I will give you a first look and explain the very first concept of gas, the so-called pull and populate, or more accurately push, pull and populate, which I will elaborate in a minute. So welcome to the first look of gas. Everything I show you today will be a work in progress, so everything might look completely differently once you get to test it. But I will show now only the first concept, uh, which is called push-pull populate. And that's the, uh, the basic concept from which the gas was born. But there are many others and I will hint at some of them and you will look, uh, see some of them in the future. Uh, here it is gas light. This is the very first user interface I made. Again, it might change in the future. Here we have the basic three concepts, which are the base and which are all these positions. If you've seen some of the videos or some of my explanations, this push-pull populate concept is, uh, is made so that you can have, you can save only the positions of elements in your model, and then you can populate and generate what you need, when you need it, and only where you need it. And these so-called assets or uh, gassets, as we call them, can be fixed, they can be parametric, they can even be pulled from grasshopper definitions, but you will see that all that in proper time, some of that even uh, now. Here are some of the samurai. I will not explain the concept of samurai now. You, it will be mentioned very soon. And here are some of the gassets, uh, some of them I might use now for the explanation. So we'll start with a simple one. I have some rotoblast pillar here, two pillars, spider. Okay, the, what are those? Those are fixed assets. What does that mean? That means that they're simply Rhino files saved somewhere else. And I'm going to pull the geometry out of that Rhino file and populate it over these positions. So I'm going to enter this uh, spider gasset. I'm going to press on populate here and I'm going to uh, select these positions. These are simple polylines with three points. I'm going to populate that. Right now I can see that I flipped uh, the positions for some reason. There is no problem. I can go here and I can delete my asset. I can see that one block was generated. To th so this is a block. Let, let's close this and show you that. So uh, when, I when I created an asset, an automatic block was generated. It, it has an ID of that asset because I assets are identified by ID and not by name and it populated it. Now when I delete it, I can delete the block and all of its 20 instances and I can select all my positions and I can say flip and I can uh, repopulate my asset over those positions. As I said, this is a rotoblast um, pillar. Here we can see. So what's cool about this? this the, the cool thing is that you can have a thousands of these in your project and you can uh, save only their positions and you can then um, manipulate them in real time. What does that mean? Here I have four, five levels of detail. I can say I want actually level of detail four and regenerate and level of detail four is only a bounding box. I said, no, that's too obscure. I want level of detail three and that's a simplified version of that asset. So this is not a visualization thing. This is the actual geometry that's changed of this asset and then asset, this asset has been populated. So I can say no, delete this asset, delete the block, delete the instances, you can choose what to delete. You see you can even delete the base objects if you want. But I want to keep using them. And I want to go back to the asset and I say give me this rotoblast pillar and populate that over these positions. This is a nice little pillar. Uh, I can say okay how about le uh, level of detail three, three. There is no level of detail 3 in this one, okay, 
then let's go with level detail one. It's a, it's a little bit uh, uh, simpler. You see, I can play with this as much as I want and I can uh, create uh, different things. I can create Boolean bodies that I will uh, deduct or subtract from the other elements that come on top. I will talk about it later, it's too much. I'm trying to explain to you this concept where you have just the positions, hold just the positions and then populate whatever you want over them and manipulate it. Now, those were the fixed gassets. In order to show you to, uh, uh, what a parametric gasset is, I'm going to use an example that was used for the birth of this software, so to speak. Because I was, uh, I couldn't believe that we have to model some screws for some, for some uh, project. And I was thinking, how can it be that there is no standard library of these screws so I can just pull and populate them where I need them in different levels of detail? And so that's how we started. So let me, uh, again, this uh, user interface is very much work in progress. Don't uh, attach yourself to any of it. Here, this sumo wrestler is a fixed gasset. Uh, uh, this butterfly is a parametric gasset, which we call gas par. So gas set and gas par. Yeah, very clever. And I'm going to create, I'm going to choose the so-called samurai. The explanation will uh, come uh, in more detail in some other video. And I will choose this uh, samurai that's called ISO 414017. What's that? That's a DLL that we made that can generate any of the screws that belong to this standard ISO. And let's, uh, let's change the name. Let's call it ISO 417 first look, whatever. I can add tags to it, which will be useful for searching later and so on. This is the ID. Every asset has to be saved with an ID, so we can save it on an online library later on. And uh, then I can try to uh, populate this, right? So let me populate this over our positions and see what we get. So what we get is something very, very, very tiny. Here is our screw. And it seems like it's very tiny. Let me remove this plate so we can see it better. Here it is. Uh, but this is a parametric asset, so it has this butterfly here and his, these parameters. So I can say I don't want M3, which is only 3 millimeters wide. I want M16, let's say, and I want it to be 100 millimeters long. And I can simply regenerate. Here you can see now, regenerate. And all of the screws have been uh, regenerated, all of the 20 of my screws. And now I'm going to show you something that will hint at a very important concept called asset nesting, but I will talk about it some other time. Uh, the concept means that an entire house can be a single asset. And you can infinitely nest asset within asset within asset within asset and within asset and wrap them like that. And uh, those nested assets, one can be parametric, one can be fixed, they can be all mixed and bundled to together. But because that's complicated to show, I will leave that for some other videos. In this particular parametric asset, this uh, uh, ISO 4017. If I go to its parameters, you can see I can put a nut and a washer and at the moment they're missing. What that means is that I have to choose from an asset. There is an asset for, for a nut and here is one and I can put it at 30 millimeters from the top, right? And then I can regenerate and here it is. It's everywhere, right? And I say, no, 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 I don't want it at 30 millimeters. Actually, I wanted it at 75. Regenerate. He put it 75, right? And then I can say, ah, there is a washer here. Let me put a washer. Here is a washer asset. And let me put that at 30 millimeters. And then I can say regenerate. And here it is. And this washer uh, is, is an asset in its own. So even though it is nested within this asset, I can find it. Here is the, uh, I mean, this search will work much better later, of course. But here is the asset of washer and it has its own parameters, its own samurai and it's M16 at the moment. I can set it to M27 if I want. This is a particular washer of a particular ISO, right? And so if I regenerate that one, you can see it re enlarged it it regenerated it everywhere and even though it's nested within this one it uh, only changed it and I can now go back to my first look screw and I can say oh, this is very nice and detailed but how about LOD2 right I can regenerate it and it's it, it's gotten a little bit simpler right and if I say LOD3 it's gonna get even more simple 
And uh, if I go, go to the LOD4, you see if it only showing me the very, very basic wireframe. So I would maybe want to use this one when I have 5,000 screws in the model, or I don't even have to show anything. I can just show the position. And that's what oh, I mean, but you can show, show what you want when, when you want it. And right now there is no mechanics in built that I, from this 20 that I only choose three to show in a particular way and other 17 in a different way, but that will come. That's my idea to maybe choose a room and, uh, and then show only in that room everything in detail and outside that room in, in low detail and so on. But we're not going to conserve ourselves with that right now. So going back to LOD1, and now you have seen uh, uh, how the parametric one works. The interesting thing about this, and I have to show it in a different way, is that a fixed asset was a Rhino file, pure Rhino file. I will sh show it to you. So that fixed asset was this Rhino file, and you can see we can prepare it and give it different LODs. It doesn't have LOD1. But we gave it LOD2, we gave it LOD3, and we gave it LOD4. And this is what you saw there when we regenerated it. And this is simply, it pulls from this file and wraps it in a block and then populates it. And then it can update that in time. But what you saw with this screw is, uh, is a samurai. So if I go here into samurai, you can see there is some RHP files, which are Rhino plugin files. Those are basically DLLs. So this uh, screw is generated by this DLL. So the cool thing is that you can have this DLL, which is a parametric asset. You can change stuff that you want in code, but you can lock it and you can be done with it. No one in the world ever has to model any ISO 41017 screw, right? It just can, can be generated and populated when you need it, how you need it. The cool thing is about, about it is that we didn't want the parametric assets to be only uh, generated as plugins at the moment in C Sharp, but we thought, what about if we try to wrap grasshopper definitions in a plugin? So we created this tower gas. And let me show you the grasshopper definition first. So it's a simple grasshopper definition uh, that creates a, a tower and it has some, uh, some inputs that you can change. And based on those couple of parameters, uh, the tower will change, right? The, the height, the number of floors and a couple of those standard things which I'm not going to go into now because that's not the point. The point is, what if I can make a samurai out of a grasshopper file? So why don't I make a new position right here? Remember, position in this case is only a simple polyline. Uh, depending on the gas set, it can be just a point and so on, but we'll not go, go into that now. And then we're going to say, I want a new parametric asset this time my samurai will be tower gas and this is not an rhp this is not a dll this is a grasshopper file and i can say okay here it is tower gas let's change it first look and now let's see what happens when i say populate it created that tower but what about those parameters, right? We had some parameters defined in those grasshopper definition. Well, those parameters got read directly from the grasshopper and moved in here. So I can see that I have some X, Y parameter here. I can move it to 40. What's that? Let's, let's regenerate. Aha, uh -huh, it's the base. Okay, now let me change the guess in R, which might be a rotation, let's say 45 degrees. These are now made like multiple choices, but we can, of course, uh, for testing pur purposes, we can change that to be inserted. Aha, uh -huh, this is the rotation. And now uh, the LOD, there's even an LOD, let's say LOD2. I don't know if this actually does something. Let's see. At the moment doesn't, but it, it can, right? So what is the point? The point is that you can create a grasshopper definition and just by simply choosing that grasshopper definition, it can be wrapped automatically into an asset that someone can take and populate, not over one position, but over a thousand positions maybe, and can simply change the parameters and that can be uh, regenerated for all assets. Now I hope, 
I have given you idea about the, uh, about the pull and populate concept. Why is it called push, pull, populate? Because the idea is that all these assets will be in an online li library and you will be able to pull only the ones you need for your project and populate. And when you create some, you will be able to push them to the library and share them with other people. They can be private, they can be public and so on. But this is gas. This is the basic idea, basic concept. And we will talk about other concepts like and how they work, like levels of detail, like nesting, very important. And uh, what is samurai and how samurai work and so on. So thanks a lot and see you soon. Oh, and there's another cool thing I forgot to mention in the video. The units are handled automatically. So that means if you have an asset or you run a file that's in meters or millimeters or inches or centimeters, it doesn't matter. Like I made gas so that it can recognize what the units are in the file you're working on and what the units of the assets are. And then when it pulls the asset, it converts it into proper units. I find that extremely, extremely important because units are a cause of a lot of trouble, let's say. And with the parametric assets, it usually works in much easier way, but that's a long story that we'll leave for the samurai concept. See you soon. And yeah, stay free.